So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I'm trying to get my my uh, my sound appropriate on here. I'm sure this sounds good, but see, I can't I can't be on it um, constantly. And if I use my eyesight from the MacBook, uh, there's gonna be a lot of background noise and fuzz. That white that white noise, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want that. Um, so, I just wanted to say um, hello to everybody. We're building some good relationships. Uh, already got a couple of calls from from a couple of you. Uh, it's working the way that we want it planned. This time next year, this is going to be a corporation. Um, my mission, my goal is to get to the top. Um, and when I get to the top, help you guys get to the top. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's kind of like an Asian family. You know what I mean? They're smart. They they come over poor, and they'll the one person that goes to college, he'll then. You know, when he's finished, pass it along to someone else and help them out. And that's what I plan to do and intend to do here. So, your guys' support means everything to me, and I thrive on that. Okay, if I can make you guys happy, it makes me happy. I wasn't born into this life to, to, to make myself happy. Um, I could have everything in the world, and I, I wouldn't be happy if I didn't ha make other people happy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'll be realistic. If you guys have machines out there that you want, tuned um, you know you can trust me if you need um, some hookups on on uh, let's say um, some machines and, and you don't have a license so they won't sell to you go through me you can trust me um, I and I wouldn't say this I wouldn't say trust anybody I don't I wouldn't trust anybody okay but but I know myself so I would trust me if I knew me you know what I mean so let's say you guys sent me uh, three four hundred bucks I'm not looking for any profit at this point you know what I'm saying even with my machines I'm not looking for profit when I get going but respecting a business like let's say you owned a tattoo shop you would probably um, you know hook up your family or whatever and your friends but you know if your friends and family respected you as a business owner then they would understand that you have to make money to keep it going right well it's the same it's the same type thing Let's say, let's say um, I had 10 million viewers here, and each one of those 10 million viewers sent a dollar to the corporation or business that I want to build. Well, then I would have 10 million dollars of capital to start a business, and ultimately, uh, off of that one dollar, buy everybody, dump it into the company, in turn, dumping it back into your guys' hands. You know what I'm saying? So it works that way. Now let's say you guys wanted a machine or something like that, and he sent me three, four hundred bucks, two fifty or whatever. I would get you the best deal uh, imaginable, you know, it, it, the best that, that I could do um, as far as getting you, a, you know, a, a nice professional machine, and you can trust that. I wish that I could go through my whole life and and uh, growing up as a young child all the way until now, you would then understand. Yeah, I'll, you know, I trust them. I'm not out to screw nobody, you know what I mean? I've got children that I'm raising, um, I have twins on the way, I believe in karma, and I don't want anything to happen to them. If if I screwed you guys over, my life is going to get screwed ultimately, and what was the point? You know what I'm saying? And um, so, basically what I'm, what I'm offering is, look, I'm, I'm going to be working on this stuff around the clock. You guys see me tired all the time and everything, but you know what? It's the dedication, the heart, and soul. And if you guys are watching this and you're, you're subscribing, you have the same passion that I do. And I want to get you to where you want to be. And I want to get to where I want to be. So um, this is another excerpt of you know just my appreciation and gratitude towards you guys and building this YouTube site. I want this YouTube, YouTube site to be a viral site. Um, 
we we are millions deep we don't realize it right now but us scratchers at home artists and stuff like that out of shops and can't afford apprenticeships we're millions deep in this country around the world actually internationally and once we start going international you know those of you out there that stick with me from the beginning I'm logging that down I've already got your guys' usernames in a black book of mine so you know in the future there might be something in store for you I might have uh, different entities around and start kind of like Walmart did a hole in the wall and now look at Walmart they've expanded to huge areas you know included food and branched out and and now 50 years later after the beginning of it look where they're at a conglomerate you know what I mean and eventually that's where I want to be I'm gonna be introducing new inventions new innovations uh, a lot of new things for this industry your artwork you know what I'm saying? I'm a very innovative person and I love to create. And that's why I don't buy a lot of things, you know. That's why this this light that I made, you know, people are like, well, it's so cheap out there. Why don't you just go buy one for 12 bucks? Because it's someone else's. I didn't learn anything if I bought if I bought a light um, from someone else. Now you guys could do that because our personalities are different. My personality is that I want to create for you guys. You know, my job on this planet is is to kind of teach I'm a great follower but I'm an excellent leader and I will lead and this is a movement this is an absolute movement there is gonna be you know a movement is the defined as something that's gonna be opposing opinions and views and causing controversy that's exactly what I intend to do that's why I welcome you haters that's why I'm challenging you you haters out there I'm fine with you haters dude I, I ain't got nothing but love for you haters dude it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me Haters are good. You're going to make me famous. You know what I'm saying? That's not the mission here, though. The mission here is is the fame will come. You know, who cares about that shit? What I care about is, you know what? Um, someone's having, an artist is having problems with his line work or shading or he doesn't, he just doesn't get the schematics of, or the, the science of this and he can't get it. He just spent 300 bucks on a DVD set from Hawk Spaulding that didn't do shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm changing that. You know, I'm gonna be coming up with DVD sets and volumes. I'm gonna be coming up with ebooks and and things of that nature, and put my personality in it and and my own versions, my own insight. I'm not going online reading and grabbing information and supplying it to you. You know, if I did that, I'd just give you the link. Go read it. You know, there are some good books out there that I want you to read. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you've got you've got a girl named Cindy Ray's, the best tattoo book in the entire world on the face of the planet. Her name is Cindy Ray's. It comes from the 50s. If you can get your hands on that book and you read it in its entirety, you're going to be 10 times a better artist just by reading that book. You know, I can't get the book right now. You know, I don't got the cash for it. It's 300 bucks. Is it worth it? Yeah. We say, oh, shit, that's expensive. Dude, don't settle for less in this industry. You cannot and will not settle for less. When you open up your shop, you're not going to settle for less. You're not going to charge $20 tattoo nights. No. No, 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 no. We need to understand what, 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 what this is all about. It's all about respect. It's all about art. It's all about, you know, Rembrandt's ain't 10 bucks. You know what I mean? Picasso's not 10 bucks. You have a Picasso hanging up in your living room or your parents do or whatever. They're balling. You know what I'm saying? So th there's, there's a difference here. Authentic knockoff. Stay away from the knockoff, dude. You go get Gucci knockoff glasses. And guess what? Your Gucci's screw's gonna fall out when you're bobbing your head at a club. <laughs> Look at my Gucci just fell apart. You know what I mean? You get what you pay for. In this business, you do not want to sacrifice. You have, unfortunately, you have to spend money in this business to make money. You're gonna have to. Your machine, you're gonna have to get rid of your $100 machine. You're gonna have to get rid, you know, I take that back. Let me back up. If you find a machine for a hundred bucks that is well put together, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to look for well put together machines, it's really simple. Actually, it's not very simple, but if you follow rules of thumbs, then you'll get there. Uh, machines are, it's a good rule of thumb. Remember, 90 degrees, good corners, flat edges, four corners, and tight okay everything tight I uh, you can pick up a machine right now and if you look at the shoulder washers or the screws used you can tell a machines quality right there the machines have to be 
beautiful all the way down to the screws, to the washers, okay? Check out, like, for instance, look at this, okay? You've got, on this machine, you're talking about, a, you know, it's a mediocre machine. It's not a $700 machine, but it is a four, you know, $450, $500 machine. Now, can we afford that on a daily? No. I did work for this, you know? I didn't buy this. I, I had to do uh, artistic work on someone, you know, b big pieces for this. But my point is, if you look at, if you look at the washers used, these are 100% copper. So why would they put 100% copper in a custom machine? Because it all matters. All the way down to the, the, the copper used to hold your springs. Okay, on your rear deck, you can enhance your rear deck right off the bat. You know how you do it? This is the rear deck, guys. Where your back spring sits is your rear deck. You can enhance this, and I'm going to enhance this machine. You do it like the Rollomatic did it. If you take a look at my Rollomatic, and you look at a lot of the machines, you see the back here. Um, check out the back here. You see that quarter? Okay, it's sitting under a um, washer, but over the rear spring. You know why that is? Because the more, the more air surface area that you have to clamp things down and tighten things down without making the machine too heavy, um, that's your objective. Okay, so this liner, it, it runs like a beast, okay? This is a little beast. You know, this is, I didn't like it at first because it's so cut back and, you know, you have to speed up your hand movements, but you know what this does? This machine, if you, if you got this machine, would make you advance because you'd have to speed up your work. Now, it works in a couple of ways for you. You have to speed up with this machine. It's a cut back liner so much with this speed bar. If you look at the arm bar inside, you can't see it, but it's hollowed out. So what that does is it minimizes the weight of the armature bar, speeding up the, the time that the gap opens and closes with that spring and contact screw. There's a lot to this, guys, and we're going to cover a lot of this stuff. Um, this video right now is going to be in regards to uh, needle depth, needle tricks, needle groupings because there's only three needles that you really need for any tattoo that's the truth that is the truth uh, if you guys are beginners right now you have to stay away from flats don't use flats you're not there yet okay um, flat needle groupings going straight across like this are very dangerous and um, until you get acclimated with skin depth proper orientation uh, deflection and um, angle of, of penetration into the, the skin don't use a flat and if you're using magnums invest into curved magnums because a curved magnum opposed to a straight magnum is going to cause less trauma to the skin uh, with tattoos the objective is to get in and get out you don't want to stay in one place too long um, tearing up that skin and you want it to heal quick the faster that it heals the more vi vibrant that your colors are and stay uh, the more that you're in there and working it, you're turning it into hamburger meat, uh, hamburger meat and you can't tell. And what's going to happen is, A, most of your pigment's going to fall out. B, your client doesn't really know how to take care of their shit. Um, and C, it's ultimately going to be your fault, but it's not. You know what I mean? We'll cover a lot of things. Same with aftercare. Uh, there's some good aftercare advice coming your way. This Aqua 4 and this Vaseline and this A and D and all this bullshit garbage that you're hearing out there and all these industries coming up with this tat goo and wax and it's a lot simpler than that, man. It's a wound. Your body has natural uh, components in it and chemicals that heal wounds. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to heal the best. Y you don't necessarily want to heal the tattoo too fast. Aqua 4 is, is going to speed up the process. That's not what you want. Aquaphor is intended to prevent infections. If their the client is taking care of their tattoo and you've given them right and proper care instructions, there's not going to be an infection unless they have an allergic reaction to the pigment, which is usually yellows and greens. So let's uh, let's get this set up, and I'm going to get into that. If I can get this right for you guys, it's very difficult. Well, not the greatest here. 
Anyhow, you get my point. They're like this, but you want a bolder line, so you're going to heat that up, and it's going to, by science, whoosh, spread them out to a perfect, bold line. That's worth a million bucks, brothers. And uh, we're going to keep doing that. That's why you have to watch my videos in their entirety, even if I'm babbling on Pay attention. Um, so let's set up that, that shader machine, okay? We're going to go into depth with this, angles, penetration, etc. Set up and grab your shader machine. There are major differences between a liner machine and the shader machine. Let me show you. Look at these two machines and tell me what you notice that's different. Good. You got it. This part right here on a shader machine. The angle is different on the frame. And it's also a different length. Take a good look. This is a specific liner and specific shader slash color machine. Very expensive. Hand carved. You love it. I love it. Take a look at what I'm talking about. Okay? And study it. Study the angles that we have set up right now on each machine. The angles of not only the frame nomenclature, but the angle of your contact screw and the angle that your binding post is in this is my liner this is my shader this is used for i'm just kidding uh so do you see what i'm saying here it's called geometry so when you're ordering machines from these kits and ebay and they say it can be used as a liner or a shader Type them back and say, yeah, bullshit, thanks though. That's a lie. This is different. This is different. This is different. These are different. And the capacitor is different. Okay? Let me grab some information from you guys and let's take it step by step. Uh, right now I'm gonna grab my little black book, and my secrets in it. All right, took a little nap and I'm back uh, trying to get rid of some bags under my eyes. But um, so let's talk a little bit about needles. First and foremost, if you're buying needles from the package, uh, from a manufacturer, they're already in blister packs, sterilized and everything, and the needles are already soldered on top of the bar, I can guarantee that you're using needle numbers 12 and 14, point 14. Uh, 12 and 14, that's standard, or, that's standard uh, issue, okay? So you have two types of metals. You have stainless steel and steel. Okay, get stainless. Steel likes to pit and everything. And really, nowadays needles are so cheap that you know you buy so many of them you just throw them away. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you know what I mean. So you're not really sterilizing your needles. The thing is, though, you can reuse your needles. 
Now, I wouldn't advise reusing your needles because that's an easier way to spread. And if you're not sterilizing or sanitizing uh, correctly, you're going to spread disease. You know what I mean? That's the last thing that we want for infection. You don't want to do that. So just throw them away. Get a little sharps container. Don't get caught throwing them out, you know, your bar garbage bags because it's 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 illegal. Okay? Just wrap it up in a fucking paper towel and bend those sharps off of it so nobody gets stuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Wrap it up nice and neat. And you really got to uh, you got to respect, you know, people out there. You know, you got you got these transients digging through garbages and stuff, and if they get poked, oh well. I mean. I, I uh, feel bad for some of these guys, but not the ones with two arms and two freaking legs. I was in the military, and I got two arms and legs, and I don't want to work either, but I have to. Um, they've got limbs at work. They can go work. That's their excuse to not have to listen to anybody. Um, if they get poked, they probably already have hep C anyways. You know what I'm saying? So who cares about them? I'm talking about <clears throat> like when you're a little kid, and you go through dumpster diving, and you're looking for all the little treasures. You know what I'm saying? I've had my share, man. I've, I actually thought about this one treasure that I got from the back of my cousin's apartment back in, uh, like, 91. And we were dumpster diving, just looking for shit that people were throwing away. And I found this, this light that can move around, and it had a one of those round lights um, around the edge, and it had a magnifying glass in the middle of that and it was mounted onto a plywood piece of board. Dude, cause way back then I was doing art and I would use it for drawing and stuff like that, man. And I, I really wish I had that. You know, I've been trying to look for that magnifying glass in the middle of the, of the light. That's awesome, you know what I mean? But anyways, um, yeah, so needles. Stainless steel, steel, go get a stainless steel. Um, when you get them, hit, you know, reusing needles, listen, if you do a, a, a piece this big, your needle's going to be dull after that session. Um, and and some of the common problems after having a dull needle is, you know, you've got, you got all kinds of stuff, okay? You got excessive skin tissue damage, scar tissue is going to raise up, pigment's not going to stay, you're not penetrating correctly. Um, so the best thing to do is when you get it out of the package, all of you guys that are following my advice, you have to go get yourself an eye loop. The more expensive, the better. I got a cheap little plastic one um, that was given to me. But it works. It's a 10 times. But they have the jeweler's loops that are really freaking nice. You know what I'm saying? I got to get one of those. But um, you have to get a jeweler's loop and a magnifying glass to, you know, look at that. You have to. If you're not doing that out of the package, you guys are fucking people up, okay? And I know you don't want to do that. That's why you're listening to my videos is because you want to advance your artistic abilities. You guys are great artists. Don't put it to waste. What happens if, you know, you're doing a tattoo and you're like, damn, that looks nice. They come back like, you know, a week later and it looks like shit. And you're like, man, dude, it's, they must have not taken care of it good enough or... You know, and that's probably the case. People don't take care of their stuff. You know, they don't even take care of their kids. So how can they take care of a tattoo? Um, but ultimately, if you do a bomb ass tattoo, it doesn't matter what they do. They don't have to put anything on it and let it heal naturally, and it's gonna look awesome. Um, that's the truth behind it. You know, all these companies, ding, 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 ding. Ooh, aftercare. Fuck, we can make this and make that and put some, uh, uh, you know, some some aloe vera in it, and oh yeah, coin that makes millions that's what they're doing man you know what I'm saying so uh, the biggest thing you want to look at is <clears throat> that all the needles coming out are straight they're all equal spaced apart basically and they're straight and at the tips they're sharp there's no barbs or bends you'll get needles out of the package that one is straight one of the needles is real thin and it looks like this all jagged and, uh, dude, they come that, that way, trust me. And throw it away. Chop it up and use it as, you know, push the weed through the pipe. You know, pack that shit and clear the resin from the your pipe. Use it as that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's that's what that's about. Two types of needles. And Another thing that you, that you want to do, 
uh, to make less trauma to the skin. Look, the whole tattooing process is about this, okay? In a nutshell. Your machine, the tighter that it is from the wraps and the coils and the type of uh, copper that you're using, you know, you want even distribution. Your your uh, armature bar, you want that to be the same material as your coils so that the magnetic frequency response is consistent. You want your power supply to supply a current from DC to AC with a consistent value. All these things are detrimental to us, okay? They, certain, they know this. These industries that won't sell you stuff because you're not a licensed artist in the shop know this, and that's why they're doing what they're doing. It's not available to you because everybody's making a million bucks off of this a year, you know what I'm saying? They're making good livings and they don't want us at home taking their business. They want to continue to sell us shit so that we go out and we scar people up and tear their tattoos up thinking that it's us and it's not. It's what we're being dished out, which is shit. Well, we're shit is poisonous. We don't want that. Okay? So, um, of course they want it that way because they want to take what we screw up and double it up. Well, you know, you had a scratcher do it. They fucked you up, so we're going to charge you double. Really? I don't really like what they did to me, so yeah, I guess I got to pay 200 bucks instead of 60. You understand what I'm saying? It's a game. It's a political game. I'm here to take that away and introduce it to you. We're building this. We're doing this. We build it, they will come. My machines are going to be shit hot. Not garbage. Not one of them will be garbage. Not one of them will I not put my time into the same as the next. So, less trauma to the skin. Objective. Really tight machine. Really consistent machine. Every part on that machine must be good material. Everything. All the way down to the tips and grips that you buy. Guys, you want to get into this? It's going to cost you money. Okay? Unfortunately, I can't change that. That's just the way that it is. You know, I hate it too, man. I can't, you know, I can't afford these thousand dollar machines, man. You know, I've got, I've got so much, uh, you know, money sitting on the table right now and I couldn't afford that. I had to do the best I could do with what I had and, you know, drop a little bit of cash, but do a lot of work. You know what I mean? So it takes time, but once you get there, it's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. You're going to go to sleep at night, not thinking about, damn, how do I do this? Why is it not working? Why all the questions and start, um, you know, thinking to yourself, man, is it me? Do I suck? No, I know I don't suck. It's not you, man. Okay. And that's why there's a maid so we can go through that. And, and I don't want you giving up. I've given up several times and I'm back and I'm back worse than ever. And I'm tired of this shit. So less trauma to the skin. Take a razor blade, your mag, go ahead. Do not bend the tips of those needles. Every single time you get a needle out of the blister pack, and I stress this, check it under an eye loop. If you do not have an eye loop right now, you have to tomorrow or whenever you see this video the next day. If you do not have an eye loop or magnifying glass, you have to go get one. Every needle coming out of the blister pack has to be checked. Okay? I'm not stressing this enough. 70% of needles coming from manufacturers are faulty and barbed and going to rip up your stuff. The guys in the shops know this and they throw a lot of needles away. You don't get to see that. They set up before you get there or they tell you to go take a seat um, and we'll get prepared. You know, they're not going to let you see what they're doing. They're they're not going to throw away a needle in front of a client. Client's going to have questions and then questions lead to answers for not being rude and losing that client. Um, And then that means that some of the secrets are gonna be dished away for free. They don't want that. So you'll never see that that aspect of it. So you take the the razor blade and you slightly go in there and you've probably seen this before on some other videos, but that's that's what it's about. And I would advise you to, to buy and purchase, if you're gonna do magnums, Get curved magnums, okay? Because curved magnums are curved on the ends and the grouping goes like this. So you can whip shade. Um, 
you, you can dig in there and you're not going to leave little holes on the sides because these are squared off. You know, I have a lot of these squared off ones, but, you know, I'm going to get rid of them and invest into a shitload or make these curved magnums because that's what I got to stick with. Um, I've got my little black book sitting here and I'm going to give you guys some information in regards to needles right now. This little black book right here is, <laughs> this is gold. All right, this is straight up a gold mine, and it's it's locked up every time I leave this house. Trust it. There's some secrets in here, my own personal secrets in here, that if they get out, I'm making someone rich. And they won't use it. They'll use it to their advantage and won't help you guys out. I'm going to do this for you. Um, so, give me a quick second. I'm going to put some stuff up on the board, and uh, stay tuned. Sorry about the background noise. I got my my son. He's watching some cartoons and playing on his little DS, but you got to deal with that. Uh, my house. We don't have our house anymore where I was set up with my music studio and my little tiny tat. I wasn't that into tattoos at that time, but if I could just go back and have that room set up, oh, man, it'd be awesome. <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, your tips for picking the right needles, okay? First of all, reputable dealer make sure it's they have a good reputation go look at um, comments and, and uh, uh, you know you're looking at uh, reviews shit like that it's definitely a good thing to do also don't cheap out on your needles in this industry you need the best of the best okay don't cheap out on your equipment guys it's why tattoos cost a lot of money when you go to a shop you know, this shit's not cheap you know, you're not gonna if, if you want Chinese equipment, pack your stuff, get on a jet, and go to China and start tattooing over there. Because if they're doing what they're dishing out over there, people are walking around with some jacked up tattoos, let me tell you right now. People are walking out all swollen and, oh God, it hurts. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, most of the Chinese, man, they're against tattoos anyways, religiously. So... You, you don't want to ever buy equipment from someone that doesn't know about tattoos or never had a tattoo, would you? I wouldn't. Would I get a tattoo from someone that doesn't have tattoos? I think I would. Yeah. Um, people say no, hell no. I'd say, yeah, dude. There's intelligent people out there that may not like tattoos, but they love the art. They love to produce things on people that are awesome. You know what I mean? That's subject to uh, your own decision there you know don't don't overuse your needles at all they do get dull uh, best thing is a nice brand new sharp needle out of the package uh, I can't stress this enough the needle aspect is very important extremely important to the outcome of your tattoo you're gonna think it's you and it's not it's your equipment I can guarantee you that probably 50 per 50 to 80 percent of you guys right now are producing things that you're not happy with because of your equipment it's night and day it took me so long to realize this I said to myself there's no way I'm spending 300 bucks on a machine no fucking way dude 300 bucks is a lot of money I can do a lot with that uh, until <laughs> my art on people's skin just wasn't doing what I did I would do something and be like what yep that's good that's a good one everybody's all happy and then a week later, they're like, dude, it ain't healing right. Come back to me and shit. It's raised up. It, it, the ink fell out of it. It uh, don't look like the way I did it. I'm getting afraid that they're going to get it infected. You know what I'm saying? I've been there, dude. I've been there and done that. And until I invested in professional pro equipment and spent money telling you, that's when it changed. It wasn't me. It was my tools. You know what I mean? My dad, he's a general contractor, and that boy knows his job. He's been in it for, you know, 25 years, maybe longer. He knows his shit. He's not going to use some rinky-dink, you know, fucking Walmart hammer, dude. He's going to use, like, a mahogany with, the, the, you know, certain designs on the tip of the hammer because guess what? He's a, he's a one hing sweat. Yeah, that actually means you're a genius. If you could take a word and kind of do that, that means you're a genius. I'm not saying I am, but one king sweat. Okay, so one swing hit is what I meant. Uh, yeah, one swing hit. 
That was crazy. Anyway, check it out, dude. So, tools of the trade is huge. Huge. Yeah? Keep that in mind. Do not cheap out on your stuff, guys. From your inks down to your machine, dude. Don't cheap out, man. The only thing that you can cheap out in this industry on is your green soap, your stencil stuff, uh, and a couple other things. The, you know, those are... I, I'm going to teach you how to make those at home instead of spending 15 to 20 bucks per bottle. You know? It's the same shit, you know? So we'll get into that too. Um, bear with me. I, I'm working hard on these videos for you guys. I'm losing a lot of sleep, but uh, it's making me happy. I like it. I like it. I really do. You guys are learning something. So am I. So, you know, you want to get into uh, what kind of bars that these are. You have a liner needle. You have a shader needle. You have a magnum needle. Okay? So you have a liner bar. You have a shader bar and a magnum bar. And they are all different. Rule of thumb and keep in mind that a magnum always has an odd amount of needles. Always. It's always an odd amount of needles. There's always less on top than there is on the bottom. The reason is, is because on the bottom, you're going to have the more needles scoop in and you're going to utilize the top row to feather out. That's how you're going to get your feathering effects and, and build up and um, you can line with mags. You know, I know a guy that that's exclusively what he uses for every single tattoo he, he does. He uses a magnum, that's it. He'll line with the magnum, he shades with the magnum, he colors with the magnum. That's what he does. I'm not there yet. I wish I was, but uh, yeah, you get to that level, dude, and you're just using one needle. You're using one needle for the whole tattoo. And like I said earlier, there's only three needles that you need for any tattoo. Everything else is just excess. It's when you start getting into high detail, prolific uh, pieces. You know? Trying to turn it into Kat. Kat Von D and uh, Corey Smith. So, uh, okay, we'll, we'll go over that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and set up a, uh, a, shader, a shader setup, okay? So grab your needle, whichever one that you're going to use. You can use rounds um, or mags. Now listen, let me get a round out, okay? So basically, let's say you have a round, okay? This is a seven round shader, okay? Or a seven loose, seven loose, because it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a shader. You know, we keep, the industry wants you to keep to those standards. Well, that's not how you're going to become the best. That's why they want you to keep to those standards because they don't want you to be the best. It's the government, man. You know, it's like the government. The government wants you to stay here and think in your mind that this is as far as you can go in life. They don't want you up here where they're at because then you become illuminated. You became, that's why the Illuminati exists. They're the illuminated entities that live on this planet. Are they even human? Who knows? Might not be. You know what I'm saying? But... The minute that you think in your mind that you're here and that's as far as you can go, that's all you'll ever do is go there. No, let's break that code and let's expand. Use your imagination. A seven round loose can be used as a liner as well. It's just going to be a thicker, bolder line. Look at the diameter of it and that's how thick your line is going to be and depending on the angle. When you stick it in the skin, if you're straight down, obviously you're going to have a lot of blowouts. It's too much pressure onto the skin. So technically, when you are lining, you're already at an angle. And we're going to cover that. I'm going to drop some ink in me right now. Um, but that's going to be for shading purposes. We'll do a lining video later, but um, let's not sidetrack. This is a seven uh, loose, okay? Or a seven round shader. And uh, so if you look at the grouping here, it's got seven needles and it's loose. So they're they're not to a point. They're just like in a round circle. If it was a seven round tight, obviously they'd be tapered down into a point. And also what's I, what I want you guys to realize that you may not know. And if you do, power, knowledge, wisdom. Um, Needles come in different varieties too, and you gotta look at them. And that's what all the little tiny numbers um, in front of, of that means. 
Um, it's really in depth and detail, but what, you know, needles, needles are tapered at a certain point. As you can see right here, and sorry about the background noise, the kids are on my nerves, but let's do it anyways. It starts right there. You see what I'm talking about? It starts right there. And then it goes this way. So basically the needles stop, you know, the solder starts way back here. Obviously the, on the jig, okay? You wanna make sure that solder and that bar is perfect because not everything's perfect on these mass pr productions out of the package. Every single time you have to look at the tips and make sure there's no barbs. If there's one barb coming out of the package, which 70% of the time there is, you gotta throw it away. If you continue to work that in the skin, the barb is just going in and it's yanking out flesh. What's it doing? It's creating white blood cells to accumulate, swelling. Swelling's gonna push it out. White blood cells are gonna push it out. And you're like, fuck, why didn't my line just stay? Well, I'm gonna go back over it again, and again, and again, and again. No, dude. You go over that line twice, you're fucked in a lining application. I'll show you how to build up lines with a liner on our lining video. And I will show you that we'll do a single pass and then we'll do small circles over that single pass and then we'll whip out to straighten up the circles and now you have a nice solid thick line without traumatizing the skin. If you're digging in, making that line and it didn't go and you're doing it again and you're doing it again, the second time you do that, you're fucked. Just like, you know, white pigment. We'll get into um, to inks um, with white. White is a difficult color to apply, and it's really not. It's just scientific. Um, you can't see it as well, especially with all the redness. It appears after the tattoo is healed, if you do it right. White highlights, or anything in the tattoo concerning white, has to be dropped one time. It goes into the skin, and you sink it. If you don't sink it the first time, you're done. You're not going over that again. If you do, you'll never get the white accent that you want. It's gonna fall out and bleed out, or it's gonna turn brown. Um, there's reasons for that, scar tissue. <clears throat> so, anyways, I wanted to show you a little trick. Looses, okay? Let's say I had a, let's say I had a freaking a, a five liner or a five tight, and the tapers um, are nice and neat. The tapers on here mean things. There's different lengths to the tips of these teetles, needles. And I also want to show you that they sit, you know, a lot of these videos on YouTube, um, all these cats out there that think they're the best, and I definitely don't. Shit, I'm on the bottom of the shit list. I've got a lot of learning to do, you know? But um, I do know one thing. I don't like people that are teaching crap. And if I'm wrong, do not hesitate to tell me, yo, Gage, you're wrong, bro. I'll be the first to tell you, you're right. I accept that. You know what I mean? I'm a real dude. But anyways, um, there's some secrets and some tips that I want to I want to cover in this video. Okay. First of all, the length of that taper has a huge impact on the work that you're doing. Let's say that you're doing a portrait. You want on a portrait, you want needle groupings that like this one. This is really long. You can see what I'm talking about here. It starts about halfway point on this jig, okay? Some of them are really short and they start right there. Well, if they start right here, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about, if you can see it. The solder starts back here, but the taper starts right here in the middle. Some of them start up here, some of them start up here. Okay, and each one of these needles has an application that it's used for. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to be a good artist, but you already are. You just need to learn. So this right here starting at half is good for portraits because of where it begins. Lining, a liner needle, real one, and doing um, different types of lining, like uh, you're lining out a name and you want it to be bold or you're doing cursive, you know, you're doing scripts. Then you want that taper to start right in here, right at the edge. Because right where that stops, that's where the, the thickness is going to be. It's called line weight. And line weight is, is uh, 
produced by pressure into the skin, the depth into the skin, the angle into the, the skin. A good tattoo has line weight in it. You have a thick line that goes into a small line and you have a thin line that goes and develops into a big line. It's called line weight. You gotta weigh out the lines. And that's what these shop guys are looking at, the guys that know what they're doing. To, uh, you know, you're going for an apprenticeship and you know, you're showing them uh, your artwork while they're looking at line weight, even in your drawings. That's why you need to practice. And when you're drawing, uh, or when you're tracing, trace as you would line the tattoo. You cannot go backwards on this tip in a tattoo. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going, you're going at a certain angle and you're pushing frontwards. And that's why we have the, the tension here and the rubber band to keep it at the back of the tube and flush at the bottom of the tip. Well, if you go backwards, you're bringing this needle out from where it is and now you're shaking in the skin. You're traumatizing the skin right off the bat. Never go backwards when you're lining, ever. Go frontwards and side to side. That's it. Never go backwards. Then you defeat the whole process of what, what these... So I just lost about three hours worth of information. Computer just shut down and I guess it didn't save the project. So anyways, um, let's start from where I left off, I guess. You've got the needle out of the blister pack. Technically, you're supposed to actually uh, sterilize it again after it comes out because you never know what the manufacturers did to it but anyways most of the time they're clean and just a sterilization a quick sterilization will suffice um, because what we're really looking for and we'll cover that in a blood-borne pathogen uh, class um, we'll cover we'll cover what we're really looking at we're really looking at hepatitis C and the spread of MRSA methicillin staphylococcus aura it's a damn demon um, and I did indicate a little bit of that on another video, but check this out. So you get it out of the blister pack. Make sure that the needle uh, grouping is on the bottom of the bar where the solder's at. Give it a little bend, okay? The little bend that you put in here, and that's why we use rubber bands. Because what's going to happen, it's going to pull this back to straight inside the tube, ensuring a up and down motion, a more consistent line. Now, to even go more consistent, let's say that we have a five round liner, which this is and I want to have a bigger, bolder line. Okay, I'm gonna take my lighter, and, and not at the solder point, joint, but at the tips of the needle grouping, go ahead, heat that up just for a couple of seconds. And what you just did is, you heated up the end where the solder's at, but not at the solder so the needles don't fall off. Um, what you did is you sent a shock wave up in there and it spread out the needles. Now you have, a uh, liner that's going to be more uh, a thicker more solid line okay that's a good that's a good thing to use and utilize now you won't use it on everything but um you know when you're doing those thick bold outlines when you're when you're doing someone's back or the last name on the ribs or something like that that's what you want to do you want to have a bold thick line right so there you go that's that's how you do that without you know grabbing like a nine round liner and pushing you know, you can't really even do that with the eight wrap. An eight layer coil is not intended for that. Really, an eight layer coil is just intended to line. And the reason be being is because lining requires less needle grouping. You can't really push too much with a magnum with an eight, eight layer wrap. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's there for. The coils are the, uh, the magnetic frequency response to the armature bar and how much uh, weight it can handle. Okay, because you need a certain punch going in especially with color so for color machines you, you want at least a 10 layer coil period you're, you're not gonna do well with the eight layer coil trying to drop color bro it's just not gonna happen so you know you have to have a variety of machines now you can make it work but trying to make that work is going to ultimately damage the skin ultimately giving you a shitty tattoo and outcome of uh, of, of, of the product and you don't want that because you want your name out there, right? You're a great artist on paper. Well, let's get it down to skin um, So that's a good thing now. Let's say I have a magnum which I'll be setting up right now uh, A magnum is a, is a group of needle grouping that you know has four to shit they have like 50 needle mags for big back pieces You need special coils for that though 
Um, but let's say that I'm pushing this. You know, just a regular uh, five mag. Well, what I want to do for less trauma to the skin is either take it and do what I told you. Spread them out just a little bit. Wipe that residue off. You don't want that uh, carbon. You don't want that carbon going into the skin. I mean, it doesn't really matter because that's how black pigments made anyways. But mostly it's carbon. Um, I'll do a tutorial. Uh, I'll, I'll cover in one of my tutorials how to make prison ink. You know what I'm saying? Simple. Take a lighter. Take a piece of steel. Grab it like this. And accumulate the carbon buildup. Scrape that off. Use some baby oil, mix it up, and you have some nice black pigment. And to tell you the truth, dude, that's how these are made. So instead of going and buying yourself a $20 bottle of black Buddha or, uh, uh, you know, some cure sumi, how about you just make your own? Yeah, and another, uh, another thing you can do for picnic, I think I'm skipping around a little bit, but you can uh, burn some wood, check it out. Obviously, and uh, let's do a paper towel real quick. Okay, check this out. And you know that there's different types of wood. Just make sure you're not doing any poisonous wood. But uh, you burn that and check it out. You make um, the carbon, and you get it charcoaly. You know what I'm saying? You take that between my fingers okay you mix that with some uh, carrier solution of your choice you know which hazel uh, which hazel is the best to knock down that gradient a lot of people just use distilled water but I use witch hazel um, anyways I'm saying basically I lost three hours of information um, I do know that we have a bar here that has got a slight curve in it. If you bend it too much, it's going to cause friction against the inside of the needle or the, uh, the tube, okay? So just a slight bend. Just take your finger like that and just roll it. A little bit of upward pressure and down at the same time. And give it that little tiny bend. Another trick is take these needles on the bottom, give them a little bend. Very fragile. Make sure that you don't mess this up, okay? So go ahead and grab your machine. I don't know what kind of machine you guys are operating, but uh, there's specifics in shader machines, liner machines, and color. So keep that in mind. An eight wrap or eight layer coil machine can't push more than five needles. It will to your naked eye. It's working but it's not gonna work in the skin, even if it looks like it is. It's not, it's not built that way, guys. Um, an eight wrap or eight layer machine is intended for light lining, light shading only. Five needles, so whatever you can get out of that. Uh, 10 wrap, you know, that's for uh, good lines, good thicker, bolder lines, um, and some surface area shading, you know. If you're doing a back piece this big, and it's going to require, obviously, the pushing of at least 20 needles um, on that shading and gradients, you have to go with 12 layers. Absolutely. Um, the cool thing about the, the higher you know, layer wrap is that you can't take an 8 and go push a 20 needle group, but you can take a 12 and push a 1 or 2. Or five see so weigh it all up and also as far as buying machines I'm gonna do a video on that I'm trying to work on it for you guys as far as um, hey I have X amount of money what what can I get the most out of my bank for my buck um, we'll go through that you just get what you can afford don't press the limits you know what I mean I will tell you that the more expensive the machine the better chances of your tattoo is gonna be pro quality okay it's a fact. It's just the way that it is, and you can't get away from that. You die, you buy a twenty-five dollar machine, a sixty dollar machine. You're gonna produce sixty dollar uh, tattoos. Okay. You know, I I wouldn't 
suggest you going out and buying a thousand dollar machine thinking that it's gonna you know oh you know what I mean but there is a night and day difference you know a good machine you're not gonna touch under 250 bucks I'm telling you that right now people will argue this fact with me but fine take a $25 machine and show me your work okay and I want to see you do it on the video and then I want to see it in a couple weeks after it's healed you know what I'm saying that's for the guys that are gonna be going against me on that um, that's it you know so let's get into setting up um, well this is a liner uh, a liner versus a shader needle you can use it as both like I said I take this and I can make that tight into a loose just like that don't heat it up too much because like you know the, the, the wave will travel up that needle grouping all the way up into the solder joint and you don't want to mess that solder joint up that's another thing to look at when you're purchasing needles that's why even down to the needle um, it's it's important that you invest and don't cheap out you know talk to people if you can get the information out like I'm distributing here which is gonna be rare but you know make it good with someone that knows what they're doing and um, and uh, find a good reputable needle company I gave you a couple of those websites utilize those they might be a little pricier but let me tell you opposed to worldwide tattoo.com needles to something that I just showed you <laughs> night and day difference yep the material even made in your needle is gonna have an impact on the quality of your tat I'm gonna set this up and we're gonna go into depth and uh, vol children in the background They're off the of school so they, uh, my house isn't too big so unfortunately um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use um, and we're gonna go into this is a lining needle right now so I'm gonna set just a liner up you can set a shader up or whatever uh, but uh, so this is a diamond tip what that does is enables the groove on the bottom the needle to set flush in there you know what I'm saying so if I was to stick the needle in and make sure when you're picking things out this does this is very important all right um, that that this matches your needle tip okay that's very important you don't want it too tight you don't want it too loose you want it right just right and uh, that ensures the proper inks getting into the tip and moving with the fluid motion or uh, or not and it's also got to do with friction okay so to go out and get yourself one of these like I said it's a lot more awesome than those hex keys trust and believe that um, and these they're just one solid piece so if you have the hex um, you don't need the rear you know what I mean you don't need the rear of it and then and then the tip you could just have one solid piece I like them. They're pricey, but they're worth it. And your tip, you want it about right there. You want it right about there. Okay. There's actually measurements for those, but uh, you can eyeball it. <laughs> 